Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of your own terrifying imagination. Mark Twain once said, Everyone talks about the weather, but no one does anything about it. The same thing might be said of the state of morality in the world today. Everyone talks about immorality and corruption, but no one seems to do anything about it. Can we do anything about it? This is the story of a group who tried, with results like this. Oh, no. Please. Please. Help! Oh, my feet. They're on fire. They're burning up. Oh, Prometheus! Promos! Help me! Please, help me! Stop the burning! I believe now! I believe! I... Our mystery drama, Ordeal by Fire was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Mandel Kramer. Prometheus' gift of fire to man was a blessing, bringing warmth, cheer, enabling man to cook his food and also protect him from wild beasts. But along with the benefits came drawbacks. Fire proved to be destructive and sometimes deadly. And man used it often to destroy. Thus was born the warning, don't play with fire. However, those who created one warning didn't follow their own advice. And they inevitably learned that they should have. Bob! Bob, over here. Ava, I wired you not to meet me at the plane. I had to. Bob, I'm so glad you're oh, here. darling. I've missed you. Me too, darling. I know I shouldn't have sent you that silly cable, but, Bob, I am so frightened. Oh, it's all right now. It is all right. No, no, it isn't. I know how important your China trip was to you, but I had to bring you back. I tried to handle this myself, but it handle just... Handle what? Not here. Let's have a cup of coffee and I'll try to explain. Ava, I just don't understand. What's your father afraid of? I don't know, and he won't tell me. That's why I sent for you, Bob. Maybe he'll talk to you. You know, darling, if you were anyone else except the level-headed, beautiful girl that I'm going to marry, I'd say this whole thing was nonsense. You won't say it after you see Dad. You won't recognize him. Why, you mean he's changed physically? Not so much in appearance, but in his attitude. You know the way Dad was completely self-assured, positive. Yes, and sometimes wrong. Of course, who isn't? But you don't get to be the head of one of the largest corporations in the country by running scared. And, Bob, believe me, Dad's terrified. Can you picture Vern Marcus scared? What's going on, Vern? Oh, nothing much, Bob. Just having my study remodeled. It looks like you're making it into a bank vault. You gonna store your money here? <laughs> what uh, brings you back to the States? I thought you planned to stay in China two months. You're the reason I'm here, Vern. Hmm, you've evidently been allowing Ava to fill your head with a lot of nonsense. Nonsense? Well, I, I don't know what she told you, You didn't but... tell me that you were turning your study into a fortress or electrifying the fence around the house, but... She told me enough to convince me that I was right to come back. What's frightening you, Vern? Now, leave me alone. Just leave me be, that's all. Is that too much? Much too much. Stop thinking about yourself and think of what you're doing to Ava. Ava has nothing to do with this. No? How would you feel if your daughter built herself a fortress and locked herself in, turning from an outgoing, beautiful girl to a frightened, petulant child, asking only to be left alone? Would you try to help? All right, Bob. You win. One promise. You mustn't tell Ava. But she's frantic with worry. I have to tell her something. No. At least let me tell her that you've confided in me. That will help. That's all you'll tell her? 
You promise? I promise. All right. My telling you isn't going to do any good. I'm caught, that's all. Caught? By what? The Promethean Society. What's that? It's a small, secret society dedicated to doing something about the lack of morality in the world today. All right, but what do you mean you're caught? I have one week to give the leader of the society, a, a man who calls himself Promus, one million dollars. Um, for what? Well, ostensibly to spread the message of the society. Well, what kind of work do they do that takes a million dollars? A public relations campaign. Newspaper advertising, television, radio. There are even discussions of making a motion picture, and that takes money. Well, I don't see the problem, Vern. If you really feel that this is worthwhile, you make the contribution. If you don't, you tell them you won't go along. I'm afraid that's not possible. Oh, come on, Vern. What are they going to do if you say no? Rather than tell you... I'll show you. Uh, Timmy, uh, Bob Steele remembers you. I'm sure you remember him. Uh, sure, sure. I remember, Bob. How are you? Well, I'm fine, but what are you doing in the wheelchair? Learning how to operate the darn thing. I can move it pretty good. It's the brakes that bother me. Oh, watch it. That's all right. I, I've got you. Oh, thanks. Now, Vern, what brings you here? Well, uh, actually, it was Bob. Well, Bob? What can I do for you? Well, Vern seems to be passing the buck. I'm trying to find out what's got him so uptight, and he told me that... What have you done, Vern? What have you told him? Well, nothing yet. You see, Ava cabled me in China because she was so worried, and I came back to try to help. How much have you told him, Vern? Well, about our joining the Promethean Society, and uh, that they've asked me for a million in contributions and they asked you for half that and you didn't pay. Well, Bob wanted to know what happened to you so I brought him here to show you. You want to see what happened to me, Bob? Unwrap the blankets around my legs. What? Do as he says and look at his feet. Good Lord. What happened? Third degree burns. The doctor tells me scar tissue will take about six months to form. Oh, and Then I can start to learn to walk again. How, how, how did it happen? Well, I was here, in my house. One day, my, my feet just burned up. Tell him, Timmy. That day was just two days after you refused to contribute the half million dollars that Promus had requested. <laughs> Ava, darling, get off my back. Oh, Bob, what's happening to us? Why are we so ugly to each other? Because something pretty ugly is going on. And you don't think I'm old enough to be let in on it? Look, I've already explained to you that I gave your dad my word. Well, at least tell me how you're going to help him. Will you be satisfied with that? I guess I'll have to be. All right. You remember me telling you about a buddy of mine in Vietnam? I think so. His name was Brian. Brian... Yes, Brian Casey. He went from Marine Sniper Scout to the Chemical Warfare Branch, and now he runs a private detective agency. Now, he should be here in five minutes. Wish us luck. I can't do it, Bob. I just can't. Vern, think what we're asking. Only to stall. He'll tell me I've had enough time. I I've known about this for weeks. He's right, Bob. Look, Casey, I brought you here because I believed you could help. Now, if you're going to agree with him... Just stalling isn't enough, Bob. We've got to have a plan. And before I can even think of anything, I've got to see what this organization looks like and how it operates. I've told you, Mr. Casey. It's not good enough. I have to attend one of those meetings. I just don't believe that any man can control fire. Mm, then how do you explain what happened to Timmy Burns? I can't. Yet. And we still can't be sure that Burns told it like it happened. Well, Timmy has no reason to lie. Then you must believe that this promos can control fire. I only know what I saw. I saw his feet, too. After whatever happened, happened. Well, what could have happened? Except what Timmy told us. Well, I'll tell you one thing that could have happened. Two rough gents could have called on Burns, tied him up, gagged him, and roasted his feet. 
I saw his feet, Casey. This couldn't have been done with matches. Bob, you know better than that. Now think back when we were in Vietnam. Remember the defoliants? Flamethrowers? Well, these guys could have used that on him. Well, then why wouldn't he tell us? Because they told him not to. And he sure would listen after they finished with him. Never thought of that, but it is possible. No, you don't know Promus. <laughs> You think he's a nice guy? You wouldn't stoop to a thing like that? Well, I don't know what he is. A fanatic or a blackmailer. But there's an aura of power about him. And a certainty. Now, I don't know. But I'm sure that he doesn't have to use others. And certainly not thugs like you describe. Well, that's why I have to meet him and see his operation. That's the only way I can help. And I don't see what good that'll do. Let's look at your options, Vern. One, you can pay. <laughs> Just the first in a long string of payments. Two, you can blow the whistle and go to the district attorney. With what? Tell him you joined the secret society willingly, that it's dedicated to restoring the moral tone of the world, and that you've uh, been asked for a contribution. That's it... why I haven't considered the police. Or three, you can believe me when I tell you that Casey here is the toughest, most competent, and most highly trained private operative I know. In addition to being a buddy of mine from Vietnam. I'm not downgrading Casey. I, I just don't see what he offers. A long shot. Now, you can take me to your scheduled meeting tomorrow night and introduce me as a sinner who's, uh, who's seen the light. Now, I'm an ex-Marine, a Vietnam veteran. Well, I made a bundle in the black market, and now I want to give some of it to the Promethean Society to uh, <laughs> to make the world a better place. But uh, I want to see before I give. And the reason uh, you don't have the million is that you wanted Promo's approval to allow me to chip in with you. That makes sense, Vern. Yeah. And if Promo's doesn't go for it or I come up with nothing, you can always pay. How are you feeling, Vern? Nervous. Very nervous. I wish Bob could have come. <laughs> Relax. Just do it the way we rehearsed it. You were letter perfect. But what if Promus asks me uh, about... No, no, no. I'll handle the questions if they're about me. Now, clue me in again on the way this affair is run. Hmm? It'll take your mind off what's worrying you. Well, the members all gather in the club room. Very austere, but comfortable. We generally chat with each other, and then when a gong sounds, we go into the assembly hall. That's a, a large room. Mm -hmm. I, I think it used to be a ballroom. It's been fixed. It has a stage at one end with a platform. And that's where Promo stands when he talks. That all? Well, there's the fire, but uh, you know about that. At a certain point in his address... He raises his arms and extends them in the white and gold robe. And suddenly, he's consumed by fire. But it never burns him. Never. And you have no idea where the fire comes from? None. We've all talked about it. At first, we thought it was some magician's trick, but, but we can't be sure. You never had the stage checked out? Well, we talked about it, but... We never did. Uh, here we are. You know, you will have to meet Promos before you can get into the meeting. All you have to do is introduce me. The rest will be up to me. So, you would like to join the Prometheans, Mr. Casey? Well, that's, that's why I'm here. Now, uh, what's with this bit about uh, uh, taking your shoes off? If and when we accept you, we'll explain our rituals. Uh, but we do not allow you into the inner chamber with your shoes on. Uh, what do you know about the Prometheans? Well, only what Vern Marcus told me. And what was that? Well, it was pretty general that you were an organization doing something about the... Shocking philosophy in our contemporary society that anything goes as long as it makes a buck. Now, why do you feel so strongly about it? <sighs> Atonement. Atonement? For what? Yeah, for, for my sins. Now, this is not a confessional. 
And I am not a priest, Mr. Casey. We're engaged in a very secular battle here against the forces that have distorted and corrupted the moral values all over the world. And we intend to use the very same instruments that did the corrupting. Well, I, I, I apologize, but I, I wasn't being flip. Maybe Vern told you I was in Vietnam in the Marine Corps. I know this isn't a confessional and you're not interested in my life story, but I made a fortune then. Opium? No, 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 no not quite that bad. Black market. I sold everything I could get my hands on. Yes. Well, while I'm greatly flattered that you want to join the Promethean Society, I'm sure you are unaware of our admission procedures. We have always selected our members, and only because of Vernon Marcus's stature and the substantial contribution he's making to the Society did I consent to see you this evening. Uh, now, wait a minute. I just... Now, much as I sympathize with people like you, you're not the type of member we seek. You know, up until five minutes ago, I thought your organization was doing something, but <laughs> now I think different. Now, what do you think now, Mr. Casey? I think maybe you are money-hungry like I was in Vietnam, and you want to stick Marcus for the million and figure on picking up another half million for me later on. If that's what you think, Mr. Casey, I'd be delighted if you'd stay for the meeting. You mean that? I never say anything I don't mean. The world is made up of believers and non-believers. The two disparate groups argue about anything and everything from the existence of ghosts to the importance of dream research. But few of the arguers ever get down to gritty reality. In just a moment, Brian Casey will see for himself the existence and power of Promethean fire as controlled by Promos when we return with Act Two. Have you ever noticed how much atmosphere plays a part in our lives? For example, it would never occur to anyone to hold a seance in a subway. And although the Promethean society did not feature ghostly voices and trumpets and tambourines, its inner room or shrine was austere and impressive with straight-backed chairs and organ music setting the proper atmosphere. The only light came from two flaming braziers on either wall. Promos, resplendent in a white and gold robe, stood at a lectern on a slightly raised stage. Welcome, Prometheans. Just as Prometheus brought man the gift of fire centuries ago, so are we dedicated to remind man that his salvation lies not in unbridled freedom and corruption, but in shoring up the wavering standards of morality and truth. Tonight, we extend a welcome to Brian Casey, a man who has indicated his desire to join with us, and who, after he has passed our scrutiny and been accepted, will undergo the rites of purification with which you are all familiar. Uh, you have a, a question, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I do. Uh, as everybody here knows, I'm a businessman, and uh, like everyone here, I joined the society with very high hopes. Uh, yes, Mr. Johnson? Well, uh, well, put it bluntly, the hopes have been realized. Uh, could you be more specific? Well, we all know it takes money to mount a campaign of the proportions you outlined to us, and we all contributed at the onset. Now, some of us have made further and ex exceedingly generous contributions, and I still haven't seen anything that in a business sense would, would justify these outlays. Now, you are asking for an accounting. Well, I, I, I'm asking for some sort of indication that something's being done. Now, you ask for a sign, a hopeful sign, which you expect to find on the page of a ledger. Uh, no, no. And uh, you shall have it. Uh, Dusselian. Uh, bring Mr. Johnson the ledger. Oh, uh, no, I, I didn't mean to imply that uh, you... Hand uh, it to him, uh, Dusselian. Uh, look, uh, Promos, I didn't mean to upset you. I only asked, as any businessman would ask, to, to get some idea of where the, the money... Take it. <laughs> well, now, look, this is ridiculous. Do you want me to 
Do you want me to look at it now? Yes. Take the ledger. And now, Prometheus, O firebringer, give our friend a sign. A sign, O firebringer, a sign. The ledger's on fire. (coughs) Drop it, Johnson, drop it. Ah, Fear not, fear not. We are all safe. None of us has transgressed. I now call upon Prometheus for another sign. A sign directly for me. Watch now, Casey. Watch. You see, Casey? The man's a sheet of flame. He, He should be burned alive. But he'll emerge unharmed when the flames die down. It's a miracle, Casey. It's impressive. But I don't believe in miracles. Well, Casey, what did you think of the meeting? I can shake you up pretty good. I'll tell you more when we get into the car and start home. Uh, Mr. Marcus. Uh, Mr. Marcus. Uh, Yes, Promus. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, uh, you you mean... Uh, Your contribution. The society has been counting on it. Uh, Of course, of course. Uh, You you understand that I've had some difficulty in... Uh, You've had plenty of time. I know. But I can't... Have you changed your mind about making the contribution? Oh, no, no, not at all. I I was just waiting for Mr. Casey here to... Uh, Mr. Casey informed me of his wish to contribute. But I must ask you, Mr. Marcus, in front of Mr. Casey here, are you completely familiar with his background? Why, uh, yes, I think so. Now, what are you getting at, Promos? Uh, you're not yet a member. We cannot accept outside contributions. Well, what's that got to do with my background? Your background will determine whether or not we accept you. (laughs) That's fair enough. If you accept me, you can take my half million. If not, it's up to Marcus to make the total million dollar contribution. Yes, yes, I will. When can I expect to hear about my application? Mm, I should say within the next 48 hours. Uh, Yes, Uh, Definitely within that time. Well, now that we're back home, Casey, what do you think? Forty is a four-dollar bill. Well, what do we do? Blow the whistle, Bob. Go to the DA. Raid the joint. I guarantee you, you'll find all sorts of gimmicks that produce the fire Promos uses. You're being blackmailed. You don't want to give the Promethean Society a million bucks, do you? No. But you're afraid that if you don't... Stop right there. Now, you saw what happened to Timmy Burns. That's what I'm afraid of. Do you have any explanation as to how Timmy's feet were so badly burned? Oh, not at the moment. I thought I did when we were made to bathe our feet in water at the purification rites, but my theory was wrong. What did you think it was? I thought, Bob, there might be some delayed action chemical in the water which might have caused the burns. But I checked my feet after I got home. Nothing. Just plain water. Well, what's the next move, then? Now, before we talk about any next moves, I need a straight answer to two questions. One, can either of you guarantee that nothing's going to happen to me? Two, if we call in the police... Can they give me the same guarantee? The answer to both questions must be no. Casey, thank you for your trouble. I'll send you a check. It's been nice to meet you. Goodbye. Now, wait a minute, Vern. You haven't heard... I've heard all I need to. It's not your skin that's in danger of being charred. Neither of you have anything to risk. I've made my decision. I'm going to pay. Casey, Associates. Ah, Mr. Casey. How fortunate I reached you so promptly. Who is this? You don't recognize the voice? Promos? Exactly. I don't suppose I have to spell out our decision on your application. I don't understand. Oh, come now, Mr. Casey. The little game is over. 
Since I've called you at your office, you must realize I know you're a private investigator. So? Well, surely you don't expect the Promethean Society to... I'm a private investigator. Now, does that make me a second-class citizen? If you've done any checking at all, you've found out that I was in Vietnam and that the rest of what I told you is true. Uh, please don't excite yourself, Mr. Casey. The private investigators are, by nature and profession, skeptics. Uh, philosophically, you can't possibly be attuned to our lifestyle. Therefore, it's my irrevocable decision to refuse you membership. I called because I wanted to tell you this personally. Uh, okay. It's your candy store. Uh, not entirely, Mr. Casey. Although my instincts tell me you don't accept it, there is a god involved. You remember Prometheus? Uh, look, Promos. I would like to hire you, Mr. Casey. What? You do undertake assignments that are uh, of a protective nature? Yes, but I... I it would be to our mutual advantage if you would. I have reason to believe that my life may be in danger. Are you willing to work for me? You'll be wasting your money. It's my money. Well, I'll, I'll think about it. While you're thinking, uh, consider the fact that if you were really serious about wishing to join us, you might be doing me an even larger service by keeping me alive so that the work of the society can go on. It's a good point. As I said, I'll, uh, I'll think about it. Uh, good, Mr. Casey. But uh, don't think too long. I'll tell you, Mr. Marcus, he's getting nervous. Otherwise, he'd never have tried to hire me. Maybe it's true. No way. Promos needs protection as much as an intercontinental ballistics missile. You agree with me, Bob? Well, it looks that way. Well, I don't see how it changes my situation. I still have 24 hours to pay. Correct. But if he's running scared, and it looks like he is, then he's got something to be scared about. Look, he's very big on Greek mythology with all this Prometheus stuff, but he's got to have an Achilles heel somewhere, and he's afraid we might find it. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Uh, good evening, Mr. Marcus. I'm not taking you away from anything, am I? Oh, nothing important. Uh, fine. I called to ask if you were aware that the guest you brought the other night was a private investigator. Uh, you, you mean, uh... Brian Casey? Uh, yes. Well, does that disturb you? Uh, somewhat. A man of his type is hardly Promethean society material. Well, I'm sorry if I made an error in judgment. It, I it thought... doesn't matter. I've just called to tell you that Casey will not become a member, and therefore you are responsible for the entire million-dollar contribution. You understand? Yes, Yes, I understand. My feet! Oh, my feet! They're burning! What? Oh, get something! What? I something! Burn. Oh, I'm burning! In the, in the kitchen! Oh. Pale! Are you Hurry. talking to me, oh. Mr. Marcus? I'm sorry. There's some oh, trouble here. No, oh. oh, I'm sorry, but... Uh, You'll uh, have the money tomorrow night. Goodbye. Oh! oh. Call a doctor! Oh, help me! Don't oh. throw your feet under oh. your body. There's a pail of ice water. Get your feet in here, quick. Ah. Oh! oh. <laughs> Merciful oh. Lord in heaven. Oh. Look at the water, Bob. Oh. It's boiling. Uh. What can turn a pail of ice water into a bubbling cauldron? Promos would say it's Promethean fire. What would you say? What would you do if you were in Vernon Marcus' shoes? We'll be back shortly with Act Three. If any human could control fire, he could easily rule the world. Unless this power was granted to him by Prometheus and could only be used when Prometheus gave his permission. 
and blessing. That is the claim of Promos, the head of the Promethean Society. We return to our story to find Brian Casey in a wheelchair with his feet badly scarred and burning for revenge. Hello? Bob? Casey, where are you? I'm at my office. But your feet... I'm in a wheelchair. Now they tell me I'll be back walking in less than three months. You've got to do me a favor. Of course. When's the next meeting of the Promethean Society? Now, look, Casey, I don't want to interfere, but don't you think you ought to lay off now? Tell me. Then I'll ask you the favor. The next meeting is this Friday night. Did Marcus pay the million? He's handing it over tonight. Where? Well, I don't know, but... Listen, closely. I want you to persuade Marcus to invite Promos to a big shindig at his house tonight. I don't know whether... It shouldn't be too hard, but it's vital. Now, why wouldn't a guy come to a party to pick up a million bucks? Casey, you ought to know better than anyone that Promos isn't just a guy. We both know he likes money. Now, Marcus can say that he wants to make a big publicity deal out of the party. There'll be a lot of tycoons there. Now, it'll be an opportunity for Promos to meet them. Some of them should be interested in the Promethean Society. And think of the impression it'll make when Marcus hands over the million. Well, it's a point. It'll work. And think of the impression Promos will make when he shows up in his robes. Why would he wear the ceremonial robes? Because they're impressive, because he's a ham at heart, and because he has to for my plan to work. Your plan? What plan? It's better that you don't know, in case something goes wrong. Well, Casey, you're asking to use Vern's house, and... I give you my word, Vern can't get into trouble. Now, you've got to make the shindig come off. Why? What's so important about Promos coming to a party? Because after he gets there, you're going to spill a glass of whiskey over those ceremonial robes. You've reached 518-8028. If that's the number you want, you'll know I never talk on the phone. you got 40 seconds to state your name and business after you hear the beep. Uh, this is Casey. I need you for two jobs at the same place. Now, we never have played games, Whitey. This one's rough. It can go all the way. But it's important to me. Now, I'd have come personally to talk to you, but I'm in a wheelchair. I need you, Whitey. Well, I hope you have good news for me, Bob. I did what you wanted. Promos is coming? Yes. It was easier than I thought. Hmm. How'd you bring him around? Uh, I told him we owed you a favor. If this works, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Look, you were kidding about me spilling a drink over Promos, weren't you? I've never been more serious in my life. If you don't do that, there's no point to the party. Well, what in the world is... Be clumsy, a little bump, and there goes the drink all over his robes. Now, you're terribly apologetic. Uh, insist on having them clean for him. You can improvise the routine. Yeah, I guess. You still want me flying blind, huh? Until Thursday. There's a second part to this operation that has to come off before we stand a prayer. I'll see you back here Thursday at four. Bob? Mm hmm? There's something very strange about this party. Nonsense, darling. I'm having a ball. Well, who is this Promos? Oh, he's quite a guy. Does he have anything to there do with... There you are, darling. Enjoying the party? Oh, excuse me, Ben. Ava, do you want a drink? No, thank you. And you don't need another either. Honey, we're not married yet. Dad? Yes? I want to talk to you about this party. Uh, later, dear, after it's over. Where did you meet this man, Promos? Now, please, this isn't the time to... Well, he's the one who's been giving you the trouble, isn't he? I've told you, Ava, this is the wrong time for me to explain. You'll tell me later? If I can, if I can. Ava, darling, you don't know what you're missing. This bartender really knows how to mix a drink. Why would Dad give this man a million dollars? Probably because he believes in the Promethean Society. Ridiculous. Uh, don't say that until you've met Promos. He's impressive. He's a creep. Come on, let's go over. I'll introduce you. You may change your mind. Promos. Ah, Mr. Steele. And this, I take it, is your bride-to-be. That's right. Ava Marcus. Delighted. 
And congratulations to you, Mr. Steele. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're not drinking? Only wine. Oh. Excuse me now. Oh, please don't go yet, Promos. We haven't really had a chance to talk. Watch oh. out, Bob. You're glad. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. You clumsy fool. Bob, you spilled your oh, drink. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I don't know how that happened. Somebody must have pushed my arm. Oh, you did. Pushing it up to your mouth. Well, I'll have your robe cleaned, of course. Uh, no. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, I insist. Uh, it was an accident. There's no need to make a case out of it. was my clumsiness. I'll have it cleaned and sent over to society headquarters. I wouldn't think of it. Now, no offense, Mr. Steele, but this is a ceremonial robe, and I'll see to the cleaning myself. Oh, right on time, Bob. Come on, sit down. How are you feeling? Eh, coming along. Uh, you managed to spill the drink over the robe? Yes. How did he react? <laughs> well, he blew up, naturally. I offered to have the robe cleaned. And he wouldn't allow it, huh? How did you know? Because he's not about to let that robe out of his hands. You think he's gimmicked the robe? I think I figured the answer to a lot of his tricks. You remember the ledger that burned up in Johnson's hands? Sure. Well, Probos has definitely had experience with chemicals and combustibles. Now, he's come up with some special ways to use them. Now, that ledger was treated with an unusual substance that would ignite when touched with the heat of a human hand. Yes, but the guy who brought it to him, uh, Dusalian or something... Mm -hmm. He was wearing gloves. Are you sure? Well, I'm sure about the gloves. The rest is an educated guess. I learned a lot about chemicals in Vietnam. Well, how does the robe come into it? Well, I just finished looking over promo ceremonial robe. How'd you get it? Remember Whitey Phillips? Where did you find Whitey? <laughs> He's got a locksmith business. I can't believe it. <laughs> Forgive me for laughing, but that slick crook a locksmith is just too much. Well, it's a perfect business for Whitey. Now, he was here ten minutes ago. He brought me promo ceremonial robe. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Whitey stole it? No, no, not the robe you stained. I told him to lift the clean one. Wait a minute. How did you know there was another one? Well, there'd have to be two robes in case one went out of commission. Uh-huh. And what did you discover when you examined the robe? What I suspected. It was treated with some kind of flame retardant. Well, would that protect his face? I mean, Vern told me he doesn't wear a mask or anything well, like yes, that. I know. I've wondered about that, too. Now, those flames leap all over. Now, if he had something that blew strong enough to keep the flames from his face... Well, that's well, pretty risky, isn't it? He's playing for big stakes. Casey, you're obviously convinced that the man is a phony. <laughs> Don't tell me he's got you believing that... Prometheus stuff, too. I can't figure him. Look, he wanted to hire you to protect him. All part of the game. He had to get me out to his place so he could fix my shoes. What? The fire that burned me started in my shoes, not in my feet. He made me take my shoes off before I went into his office. Then he must have had the shoe treated with phosphor or some other of these chemicals that ignite under heat. Well, you know, like he did with the ledger. The heat of my body touched off the shoes. That's the same thing he did to Timmy Burns. I think so. Well, what are you going to do? Fight fire with fire? I managed to remove the fire retardant substance from the robe Whitey brought me. I treated it with some chemicals that uh, <laughs> really like fire. I fixed it so that Prometheus will really have a chance to bring the gift of fire to Promos. <laughs> Whitey made it. Are you sure? Why shouldn't I be? Byrne just heard that tonight's meeting has been called off. Any reason given? No. Another date set? Indefinitely postponed. Now, do you think maybe Promos suspects something? No, no, we've got to trust Whitey. Why would Promos call off the meeting? Well, maybe he's, uh, maybe he's packing in the entire operation. With Marcus Million, he may figure he's had it. Now, that leaves us up the crick. Only one option. We have got to get that meeting rescheduled. The Promethean Society. Promos? Speaking. This is Bob Steele. Look, I don't know whether you even want to talk to me because of the way I behaved at the party. Accidents can happen, Mr. Steele. Well, I called because I heard that tonight's meeting had been called off. Yes? And no date had been set for another? Now, that is correct. Oh. Well, I, I guess that's that, then. Uh, Mr. Steele, would you mind telling me what you're obviously trying to tell me? Well, it probably wouldn't mean much to you anyway. 
it was only a small contribution. Contribution? Uh, from whom? From the group that I represent. Uh, you probably don't know them, but we're setting up an import-export business with China, and I talked to them about the society and you, and of course I could only tell them what Bernard told me, but they were very impressed. And what has all this got to do with tonight's meeting? Well, uh, without meaning any offense, Mr. Steele, I find it extremely difficult to follow what you're saying. <laughs> well, I apologize. I guess it's because of that spilled drink. I, uh, I still feel embarrassed. I think I ought to just forget the whole thing and return the briefcase with their money. I think it would be a lot better and clear up a confusing situation if you came here and told me just what you have in mind. <laughs> I'm sorry I took so much of your time, Promos, but I'm sure you understand how my group feels. I'll just take the 50000 back and explain to them that I couldn't witness a demonstration. You are always apologizing for the wrong things, Mr. Steele. First you spill your drink on me. Now you say you're sorry for taking my time when I asked you to come here. But you don't apologize for putting me in the position of a cheap magician putting on a magic show for money. I never intended any... Now, what did you intend? Just what did you tell these business associates? That I was some kind of sideshow freak who would become a fire swallower for a fee? What's the name of this game you want me to play? I'm terribly sorry. I... You're sorry? You've not only insulted me, but Prometheus... Well, I guess there's there's nothing for me to say. Oh, yes, there is. I'll give you something to say. Go back to your, your associates and your father-in-law and tell them they can come tonight and see Promos and the Promethean Fire. I don't like it. What's going to happen? At this point, I don't know. Well, what did Casey say when you told him how Promus reacted? Good evening. I will extend no welcome to those of you who have come tonight, not because you believe in a cause, but out of curiosity. I don't like this, Bob. Tonight, will you have the courage to face Prometheus, as I do? Oh, Prometheus... Bring me your gift, your gracious gift of the purifying fire. Behold the fire, the consuming flames that Prometheus... Take it off! Take it off! Those who live by the sword die by the sword. The man who called himself Promos, who lived by fire, died by fire. A flaming, horrible death. A warning to... To whom? To criminals and perhaps a warning from Prometheus not to misuse the gift he brought mankind. I'll be back shortly. If you're chilly, how about pulling up closer to our roaring fire? On second thought, after tonight's tale, that might make you a trifle uncomfortable. I'm sure that like most people, you would like to do something about making people more conscious of the values to be found in human decency and honesty. May I offer one word of advice? If someone asks you to join a society for this purpose, think twice. Our cast included Julie Newmar, Mandel Kramer, Earl Hammond, Guy Sorrell, and Sidney Walker. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.